Welcome back to Beyond the Source Wall, and today we're going to talk about more Gotham Knights, uh, as promised. I'm kind of going through this game and the footage that I played through, and kind of breaking down each major section of the game. So I was going to do chapter by chapter, but in this one, chapters 2 and 3 were really quick to get through. Uh, chapter 2 is called The Rabbit Hole, and chapter 3 is called In the Shadows. And in these two chapters, they only had two sub-chapters, and it was pretty much focused on setting up some of the side villains like Clayface and Mr. Freeze and Harley Quinn. And then also for the main storyline, uh, reacquainting with Talia al Ghul and then also bringing in Cobblepot, uh, Oswald E. Cobblepot the Penguin, who is uh, at this point in the story when they start off in Chapter 2, you know, all the knights are in their belfry and they're going over the cases and they're like, all right, here's Harley Quinn's book that she gave, you know, Nightwing, or at least gave me Nightwing because I was playing as him in the last episode. Um, and then they put all the notes on the board and they're trying to figure out how they all connect. And then Barbara figures it out. She goes, oh, it's actually, this is what we got to do because Harley Quinn's doesn't make sense sometimes. And that's why all of her notes are out of order. So she put them all in order. And what they found out is that for years now, there have been people that have gotten either too close to something or uh, have, you know, they, they can't explain who, you know, why they died. Um, I mean, they know why they died because all of them are pinned by their hands to a wall with knives. So they all share that in common, but they were all either working on a, on a case or looking into something or part of something or rumored to be part of something. And they were all um, let go, like let out of jail free. Some of them didn't have to serve time and they were let go and then they ended up dead. And that's very similar to something that happened to Kirk Langstrom at the beginning of this game. So as they're piecing that together, they realize, you know, Tim Drake comes out and goes, you know, there is someone who has been arrested for these types of crimes that has served his sentence every single time. And they, they figured out that maybe Cobblepot or Penguin has been left out to dry. Like that uh, whoever is orchestrating all this and behind all these murders and all these cover-ups, they, they aren't throwing any bones to Penguin. And so now Penguin is in charge of the Iceberg Lounge. So they're like, well, let's go ask him. So that's pretty much what you do in this. And he doesn't want to tell you. He's like, look, I'm, I'm not going to get into this. If you go down this rabbit hole, it's you're never coming back. Uh, so there's a secret that I'm holding that has been held in Gotham for 100 years or more. So I'm not going to be the one to, to spill the beans there. And uh, especially when they're, you know, he's kind of hinting that they're listening to him. So you kind of leave and go, OK, I'm going to go try to find an, another thing that will connect this. And then when you come back to Cobblepot, he's like, okay, he kind of lets you in on there's something around that, you know, they maybe they have the room bugged. So again, in the beginning, I played as Tim Drake. It was my first time playing as Tim Drake. And uh, I got to have a lot of fun running around, beating up criminals with him and doing side missions and stuff um, and solving crimes. In the comic books, Tim's a very good detective. He's actually figured out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. And that's how he became Robin after Jason Todd died was because he figured out who Batman was. Um, and so in this game, though, they really play up that he's very smart with the detective work. And so I was like, all right, cool, let's let's check in on check out some of his abilities. So I went around, leveled up him a little bit, uh, got some of his other costumes, which were really cool looking and ran into Penguin the first time as him. And then the second time I went to see Penguin, I would I went back as Nightwing. So I was just rotating. I was, I, you know, started with uh, Red Hood and then went to Barbara, then Nightwing, and then Tim. And then I kind of jumbled him around a little bit to kind of play more as certain characters. Uh, but I ended up playing about the same amount of playtime hour wise for each character uh, throughout my 20 hour playthrough of this game. I think I put in roughly about five or six hours or five and a half hours to each character somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and then so and I went about 20 to 22 hours to beat the game. So yeah, pretty, pretty balanced. I had a lot of fun. Um, but this is also in the part of the game where I was still intrigued. I was like, okay, some of the dialogue's not great. Some of the gameplay has some issues. But uh, but overall, I was still kind of locked in. I was like, I'm, I'm interested in this. I want to see where this goes, especially with the Court of Owls. And that's when we find out that Cobblepot has been kind of working with the Court of Owls, but they don't like him. His history, his family history goes back to the creation of the Owls, and they never liked the Cobblepot. So any chance they get to burn him, they do. And so that's why he kind of is like, all right, here's the, maybe the room is bugged. And you go around and find all the bugs and dismantle them. And then he tells you about the court. Um, but then that's going to come back to bite us all later on uh, in the next chapter for sure. Um, but in, in at least in chapters two and three, uh, they set that up and then you go and discover who the court is. And so in that gameplay, I think I was Red Hood in that gameplay. And I ended up finding the like the underground pits of, oh, no, I was Nightwing still. I think I was Nightwing. And I went into some of their sanction, sanctuary areas and I was moving statues and stuff and ended up becoming, you know, uh, as Nightwing running into the court. And then again, uh, when I was going down into the 
the tunnels and stuff, I went as Red Hood. So I had an interaction with them as, uh, as you know, against the court as Red Hood also. Um, and that's where the second part uh, or the uh, second chapter and third chapter end. The third chapter ends with you running an Italia on the rooftop and accusing her of working with the League of Shadows still, even though her father was running them. And now they apparently are masterless. He's like, no way, you must still be running this and you're working out a deal with the Court of Owls. And she's like, no, I'm not. You know, the Court of Owls, they are they are very misguided. They could never understand the intricacies and the magic of the uh, Lazarus Pit um, and how and how to really utilize it. Um, but also the, the League of Shadows is never going to team up with a bunch of mindless zombie talons, uh, which is what gets sent after you. So you meet the Court of Owls and their henchmen, the talons, in this in this side. And then also, like I said, you, we do get a little setup more for Harley Quinn because she's going to be a side boss that you can go do side missions for. And we'll do a whole episode on her side missions. Um, and then also Clayface, they set him up. So we're going to do a whole episode on his side missions as well. And then Mr. Freeze, who works with the Regulators, a new gang in Gotham that steal a bunch of tech like Mr. Freeze. So they have freeze guns and electric guns and stuff like that and little you know laser beams and stuff. So that's another group uh, that shows up in the, in the game that you have to now battle because you have the freaks that kind of work with Harley Quinn and those type of characters. Um, and then you have the Regulators and then you'll have the Talons. And so every group that you go against has their own form of henchmen on some level. Um, the mobsters have theirs and, and so on and so forth. So so yeah, so this was just again a point where I'm like, okay, um, I'm still locked in. I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm glad they're bringing in the court. They're doing it very well at this point in the game. But like I said, as the game progresses, they start losing focus of the court and they start the storyline starts to get really bad. And in my opinion, where it really lost me was all the side quests. And so we'll probably do all those as one episode where we talk about Harley's side quest, Clayface's side quest and, and Mr. Freeze's. Because in the games, or in the comic books, Mr. Freeze actually played a part in the Court of Owls. His cryotechnology helped them inc uh, develop their talents even better. In this, I understand they're doing that with the Lazarus Pit, or they're trying to, but then it makes Mr. Freeze just feel like an arbitrary threat in this that doesn't feel like part of a whole story. And so he just kind of gets sidelined, and then he becomes a giant, like, Metal Gear Solid mech and stuff. And so we'll get into all that and I'll tell you my thoughts, but that's where the game really started to lose me on some level. And then when we came back to like chapters six and seven and eight on the main story, that's where it started to lose me. But for now, I'm still on board and I'm still kind of liking it at this point in the game. And I'm willing to do some of the side quests and the grinding to get to more main story stuff because I'm still, like I said, kind of liking it. And I really do like the interactions with the characters between the knights. Like the, there's great moments where they all talk to Alfred or they talk to each other. There's these heartfelt moments that are back at the Belfry that you can unlock after certain missions. So, and then also out in the city as like you can talk to Montoya and Lucius Fox and you get more of those interactions too. And I'm liking those as well. So at this point in the game, still kind of enjoying it, uh, but we'll start getting into the part where I'm, I, it's a downfall for me and it starts going down and down and down and down to the point where I ended up not liking this game overall. And we'll get to that in future episodes. So, and I'll try to get them out faster than I have been on these ones. So uh, between the first episode and this one. And then also we'll dive into the comic book. I already did review issue one on my main channel, but I'll give a brief summary of that when I review issue two. And I'll put that on this channel and we'll review the Gilded City comic books, which is a prequel to this game. We'll talk about those. We'll also talk about the original Court of Owls comic book. And I have the version with the mask. I also have the toys from McFarland that are from this game. So we'll do like reviews of each of those toys um, uh, individually. And so again, more, more fun stuff, uh, more than just video game stuff. We'll talk about other things on this show uh, for sure. But for now, let me know, what did you think of chapters two and three of the games and the setups of the side missions? What are your thoughts of the point of this game where we talked to Talia and then we jumped off, we went back and talked to Cobblepot and he said, yeah, you know, let's work together. I'll, I'll tell you about some crimes. You can go out and stop them. That's kind of where we ended with chapter four. And so going up to that point of the game, if you played it yourself or if you've seen other people, other people play it, um, what did you think? You know, uh, let me know down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in Gotham. Peace.